Hi, this is Todd from Thingam, and I'm going to be showing you a little bit about the Blink-1 control application for Blink-1 devices. So when you start up the app, this is what you'll see. It's one big screen with um, sections devoted to different kind of concepts in the Blink-1 control universe. The most important is probably the top left. This has a virtual Blink-1 and a little status area showing uh, device status, if there's any, bl any Blink-1s plugged in or not. If you plug a Blink-1 in like I just did, then you will see it say connected shortly and the serial number of the blink one and the if this and that key uh, will be shown which is useful if you use the if this and that free service if you don't you can just ignore this but now anytime i click on the color picker both the real blink one and the virtual blink one's colors will match and this is handy if you don't actually have a blink one or if your blink one is kind of outside of your visual field you can easily see what's been what's going on with the real device in the color picker you can select to have a specific LED to be controlled since there are two independently controllable LEDs on the Blink-1. You can control both of them with the AB button. You can set the colors either via this color palette or by typing in the RGB components or if you're a web person you can type in direct X colors. And um, over here is the color pattern section. Once you, um, if, if you want to create a sequence of colors, this is the way to do it. To do it and to um, play a pattern, just press the little play button, and to stop it, press the corresponding stop button. There are many patterns that ship with Blink-1 control, but you can make your own. And um, above this is a set of buttons. These big buttons, are these bottom ones are configured by you and you can add your own. I've created a couple here, um, off work and afternoon tea. So anytime I click these, I, it kind of lets my coworkers know what I'm up to. If you want to make your own, just pick a, pick a color you want, click add button, if you want to rename it, right click and there's all these different options to rename it. One of the ways, uh, one of the things that I like to do is uh, work from home. And uh, let's have a button for that. And um, if you want to move the buttons around, you can move the buttons. If you want to delete the button, you can do that. If you want to have the button trigger a color pattern instead of a just a, just a straight color, right click and choose set to pattern. And, um, and now, it plays this groovy pattern. And again, you can stop them all or you can turn it off. These buttons up here are sort of test buttons to let you try out the Blink-1. This is really common to use just because it's handy to kind of shut everything down. This turns the Blink-1 on full white, kind of useful if you need to, need, need to use it as a flashlight. This is a strobe light and, uh, you know, sometimes on Fridays you need a party mode. Now, the other way of triggering events with Blink-1 control is perhaps more important than party mode, and that's event sources. And so these are pretty much anything that's out on the internet that you want to have affect the Blink-1. Two of the most common ones are if this and that and email. But to make a new event source, you click the add event source button and choose the type of event source you want. Let's choose if this and that. And this rule name is the corresponding string that you would want to copy for your if this then that rule. And so I have one in there called uh, my rule name, I think. And then um, the pattern is which color pattern to play and when that rule matches. And so let's say, uh, again, groovy. And, um, and now this rule has been created. The um, name and description are based off of your configuration. The um, event is anytime this rule is triggered, this last event will have that what that what the result was of that um, that trigger the recent event sections down on the lower left will also have a list of all the different events as they go off and if you want to edit this you can click the little edit pencil or you can just double click on it if you want to disable a rule temporarily because it's been going crazy and it's triggering your blink one too much you can temporarily disable it without deleting the rule and then it becomes grayed out um, similarly if you want to add a mail rule this is a bit more complex. This is perhaps the most complex uh, event source in um, Blink-1 control. But on the left half is the standard email login credentials settings. If you have Gmail, some of this gets filled in for you, but then you just type in your standard login credentials information that you would use. And um, you can name this whatever you want. These strings don't matter. So let's say this is my work email uh, that checks for springs because I want to trigger any time an email about springs comes in because I'm waiting for a shipment of springs. I can have that. And, um, and now when, um, if I ever set this up correctly, I didn't type in my real password, but when I click okay, that will actually start the, 
the check up and every uh, 15 seconds, I think, or actually no, an email is push. So every time a new email comes in, um, this, this will be get checked and if it matches springs, then you'll get an event and it'll play test pattern. Oh, actually, no, wait. I wanted it to play Groovy again. Now all of these are disabled right now because I've been playing around, but we can delete some of these. Um, if you want to copy a rule, you can just do, you can use the copy function and um, you can create as many rules as you want. Um, some of the other rules we have are things like uh, for scripts and files. So if you have a file on your disk that's changing, it can, it can contain a color name or a color pattern. It can contain um, JSON or text. Same thing with scripts that you might execute on a periodic basis. If there's a URL out in the world that, that you have control over that will emit a, a JSON or text format that will emit a color or pattern name, then um, you can use this for URLs. And um, the way these work is you basically just type in the URL. Oops. Like I think I have one called uh, color.txt. And uh, let's call this uh, color test. And um, I think it's just a color. And um, yeah, so this, this it parsed the color as FFA899 and um, it changed the, the virtual blink one and the real blink one. And but let's turn this off for now because I don't want it to run all the time. Now in the advanced preferences, which is available via this little gear icon or via the preferences um, option in the menu, you will get a list of things a little bit more um, about the underlying functions of how Blink-1 control works. The start minimize and start at login are, are useful for if you want to have Blink-1 control kind of work in the background. The play pattern serialize is useful if you want the Blink-1 if you want the Blink-1 patterns to play um, single file rather than all at once. If you have multiple patterns that trigger at the same time, then um, it can be a little bit confusing because the colors will mix. It'll be hard to tell. This will have them play one after another, and any currently playing pattern will pause while the the new pattern plays, and it'll go back. Um, if you are a fan of uh, little. API REST servers, Blink-1 Control has one, so you can control pretty much every aspect of a Blink-1 via HTTP calls to your own computer running Blink-1 Control. You can just turn that on like that. And if you have multiple Blink-1s, you can now use them in your, um, your event source uh, configuration. By having this ticked, you can select uh, different Blink-1s from your um, from your event source configuration. So for instance, I just plugged in two more Blink ones, and you'll see now it says three devices connected. And the serial number is always for the for the first Blink one, the highest kind of ID'd Blink one. And um, and so it, 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 it'll form the basis for your if this and that key, just, just to, to let you know. Uh, but now there are these three extra color spots, and these indicate the different Blink ones there's sort of like a mini version of the virtual blink one. And so now I can go and I can actually control the different blink one devices by clicking on one of these and then playing with it in the color pattern, uh, sorry, in the color picker. I can even do like before and choose different LEDs of each part of each blink one. And um, so now I've got, you know, I've got essentially six different LEDs at my command here via two different blink ones. And um, again, I can turn all this off. Uh, <laughs> um, and if you have multiple link ones, I can now assign, oh, this didn't update, oh, dang it. Well, this is a small bug, but um, this, the, if, the, if the application is reloaded, you'll be able to assign a, a pattern, sorry, you'll be able to assign a button to a specific Blink-1 device. And uh, you can also trigger these, these big buttons here via the control menu. So you can use um, hotkeys, command one through whatever, how many, however many buttons you have. And you can also press the off button sort of remotely. And then what else? Uh, let's see, well, there's a um, pretty extensive help page now. So if any of this stuff uh, doesn't work for you listening to it or a video, you can read through most of it in this help file. And uh, I think that's it about the overview. Um, if you have any questions, please leave comments or, uh, oh, or <laughs> even better yet, file an issue. If you have any, any questions about like uh, you, the things that you think are bugs or feature requests, this is perhaps the best, fastest way to get 
um, input into how Blink-1 Control evolves. So thank you very much. This has been the Blink-1 Control 2 demo. Have a good uh, day.